Now, if you have basics and they have professional grade skills, obviously you're not going to get a single interview. Your competition are other established coders with two plus years of experience, computer science degrees, and lots of runs on the board, lots of track record. That's who you're competing with for your first job. Welcome to Easier Said Than Done with me, Zubin Pratap, where I share with you the tens of thousands of dollars worth of self-development that I did on my journey from 37-year-old lawyer to professional software engineer. The goal of this podcast is to show you how to actually do those things that are easier said than done. All right, guys, today I'm really excited to talk to you about something that's very dear to my heart, which is a no BS approach to career change, especially to code. Now, there are seven steps or seven stages to career change, whether it's to code or something else. And most people tend to focus on one or two and forget about the seven. And the problem is this is a bit like a person thinking, well, the only way to the or this is a bit like a person thinking that to become a best-selling author, all they need to do is write the book. No, that's not what you need to do. That's the first step. That's not all you need to do. There's lots more to come after that. And often it takes two to three times the amount of time to actually get an editor, get reviewed, get published, market the book, and actually get into the st- shelves than it takes to the, actually write the book. Okay, And it's very similar with career change. So let's just dive into that. There you go. You can see my screen. So you can see that I've got a picture here of the seven stages, right? And the first three I've marked is not enough, which is what most people focus on. And the next four are the essential steps, which most people never really think about until it's too late. But let me read out the sacred seven, as I call them, the seven steps. One is clear goals. Two, design a study plan. Three, learn the fundamentals. Four, upgrade from fundamentals to professional grade skills. Five, get interviews, also known as opportunity generation. Six, interview preparation, and DSA is not the most important thing for that, right? No matter what people say. (laughs) And the seventh step is offer selection or negotiation, right? Which is really important for your long-term step. Now, let me break each of these down into a little bit more detail for you, and then I'll point out some interesting things. But note that each of these seven, right? All of them are complex skills in themselves, but also each of them requires an individualized plan for that step, right? You need, it's a sub goal. And so you need a specific plan for each of those sub goals. Now, in my previous episode, I think it was number eight, where I talked about the only three reasons why people fail being wrong plan, wrong execution, and wrong expectation. These are the only three reasons, the really powerful framework to analyze why you're not getting the results you're wanting. And you'll see that the most important one there is having the wrong plan because that's gonna set your direction, right? And for each of these seven steps, you do need the right kind of plan. Now, let me dig into these a little bit more. So what's clear goals? Well, we all know the importance of goal setting, but most of us do it really badly. For example, when we say, oh, I wanna get a coding job, that is a terrible goal. Why? It's a bit like saying, I wanna go to holiday. I want. Why? Because it's a bit like saying, I want to go for a holiday to Africa. Great. That is actually not helpful because you don't know where in Africa you want to go, right? And if the plane would have just throw, or the pilot would have kicked you out in the middle of Africa somewhere with a parachute and say, well, you're in Africa now, you'd be deeply unhappy. You want to get on a plane that knows exactly where it's going and that takes you all the way there. In fact, you argue that when you're going on a holiday, you don't want to go to most of Africa. You want to go to the specific parts of Africa that you want to see, right? Similarly, saying I want to be a coder is like saying I want to go to Africa for a holiday. It's completely non-specific, and you're not going to want to go to most of the places you end up being because that's not what you actually wanted. So clear goals require specificity, right? I've covered this in the other episode, I think, in, in episode number eight. Similarly, with designing a study plan, right? Most people just leap into action. They just immediately start learning anything some social media influencer said, or they read in some blog, or they see a lot of. Now, keep in mind that the reason why you see a lot of some languages represented in social media is because search engine optimization, right? People are producing content based on things you're looking for. So that's why when the AI stuff started happening, and chat GPT became big, which by the way was later, like the AI stuff happened before chat GPT, at least six to eight months before that, there was you know the rise of LLMs, but chat GPT made it really famous. Everyone started searching for chat GPT and LLMs and stuff like that. And so what ended up happening is people said, hey, there's a huge amount of search interest. I'm gonna write or publish blogs or articles or videos on this topic. And because they did that, it looked like this is the most important thing in the world. And I'm not saying it's not important, it's super important, but that's an ex- example of how SEO drives the content creation calendar and the content creation calendar then makes you believe that that's the most important thing in the world when it's not it puts this little algorithmic bubble around you okay so 
Designing a study plan requires you to have clear goals and a clear understanding of your circumstance. Again, see the previous episode on the three reasons why people fail to understand more about this process, okay? But you have to design a study plan and that's a whole skill in itself. Then you need to learn the fundamentals and there's a whole lot of stuff about sticking to the right thing and making sure it's the right sequence of events or sequence of learning that you have and so on and so forth. That's learning the fundamentals. Now, most people think you can learn a little bit of some language like SQL or which is not even a coding language or JavaScript or Python or Java or whatever it is, I'll get some basic coding knowledge and then I'll get a job. That is not how it works. That's like saying I'll, I'll learn a little bit of basketball and then I'm going to go and compete with LeBron in the NBA. Okay, <laughs> it's not going to work. Learning the fundamentals is the starting point. Then you need to go to step four. You need to upgrade your skills, your competencies to get professional level skills. Why? Because your competition are professionals. Your competition is not people like you. If you're changing career to code, your competition are other established coders with two plus years of experience, computer science degrees, and lots of runs on the board, lots of track record, okay? That's your real competition. That's who you're competing with for your first job. Now, if you have basics and they have professional grade skills, obviously you're not gonna get a single interview, which is why step four is important. You need to upgrade your skills from the basics, which is just literacy, to actual professional grade skills, okay? Like you're going from being a casual street cricket or ball player to a professional grade athlete. Okay, there's a big jump involved in that. Now, after that, you have the get interviews and opportunity generation section, which unfortunately a lot of people just skip this because they don't know how to do it and it's too scary and it's too uncomfortable, too unpredictable. And they go st straight to step six, which is interview preparation. And they spend all their time on DSA, data structures and algorithm stuff, when in fact, you may not even need it for most interviews. Now I've counted personally, when I coach my students, I teach them on the six to nine different types of coding interviews because there are many types of coding interviews and not, not all of them will require DSA. So you need to know how to prepare for it. But guys, there's no point skipping step five on getting interviews and going straight to step six, which is interview preparation, when you don't know how to get interviews. What's the point of preparing for something you don't know how to get? It's a bit like buying expensive clothes and a really and renting a really fancy car to go for a party you've never been invited to. It makes no sense. The skill here is first learn how to generate interviews and get interviews, and then you want to prepare to do well in the interviews depending on the kind of interview it is. So that's five and six, right? Opportunity generation and six is interview prep. Now, the last stage is offer negotiation, offer selection, and offer negotiation. And that's really important because as I keep telling my students, you don't want to be in a dead end job. You don't want to leave a career you don't like and find yourself in a new job you hate just as much, okay? You don't want old patterns to repeat. So you want to always choose a job that sets you up for the next two jobs. This is how you build a career. Don't just focus on the job, focus on the career that gives you the time, the freedom, the capacity, the working environment, the learning, the growth, and the money you want, okay? So all of this goes into offer selection and offer negotiation. The key here is you can't select if you have only one. If you have one, you're getting the default option. That's why I train my students on how to generate opportunities so that they have at least two offers to select from. That's the goal that we wanna select, ideally more, ideally four plus offers. That's then, then you can do really good offer selection and negotiation, okay? And this is how you start to do it as you get through your career. It may not happen that easily at the start, Things are always harder at the beginning, but once you learn these skills, you'll use it for the rest of your career. And that's why I teach my students so much about career skills, not just the transition to the first job, which obviously is the short term goal and that's important, but I teach them for how to build a full career past that point, right? That's why, that's why I do the 12 months of coaching that I do. Now, these are the seven steps, okay, to any career change, not just for code, but definitely for code as well. Now, I want you to notice something. I've already covered the fact that each of these steps has sub skills and sub plans required, but here's the interesting thing. And this is what made me get into the coaching thing. A lot of people say, why do you do the kind of coaching you do? It's longer than boot camps, it's cheaper than boot camps, it's harder than boot camps for you, for me that is, because it takes a lot of time and so on and so forth. But why do you do this? And the reason I do it is because there are multiple industries beating off people on each of these parts, okay? And I don't mean it in a bad sense, you know, it's perfectly legitimate, there's a marketplace and, and there's needs being met. But I realized that most of these services only choose one of the steps because it's much easier to grow a big business if you focus and niche down on the one step, okay? There was very little to help people in my stage of life because I was in my late 30s when I learned to code and, you know, became an engineer and then eventually went to be a Google engineer and all of that. At my stage in life, there was almost not, there was pretty much nothing out there. And I realized the reason for that is people like me have, you know, other circumstances. Once you're past your 20s in your early 30s onwards, 
is you may have more money to spend on things, you know, to invest in yourself or to get yourself an education or whatever, maybe, but you don't have a lot of life circumstances. People have kids or relationships or other things in life that take up time or they have mortgages and stuff. And so it's hard, right? And the reason why a lot of companies focus on these smaller niches is because it's easier to target people who are in high paid jobs for each of these smaller niches, and then you get to sell them different products. There was no product until I came along that does all seven stages because it takes a lot of time and it's not scalable to do all seven stages because it needs to be customized to each person. That means I can't create a factory process out of it. So I do the personalized coaching with a few people for a fairly long period, you know, six to 12 months at a time. And I cover all of these seven for a reason. Most people tend to focus on only one or two of the things and then they lose their way. And that's why most people fail. Remember, for every one success story you see out there, there are thousands who never made it. Okay, that's got to change. And that's that's what I'm trying to do. So notice there are separate industries for each of these. For example, clear goals. Right. These are typically done by performance and career coaches, etc. Life coaches will help you do clear goal setting. That's an entire industry. Right. Designing study plans. Well, this is what colleges do when they create your your create your standardized curriculum. This is what boot camps do when they say this is what this is the learning pathway you're going to have. They've already designed your study plan for you. Right. When I work with my students, I design a custom one, not only based on their goals and their starting point, but also based on their lifestyle and circumstances and how much time they have. Okay. Three, learning the fundamentals. Well, that's what courses and tutorials and boot camps and college, etc., help you do, right? So that's an entire industry right there, just on the fundamentals. In fact, most of the learning to code resources online are fundamentals. The vast majority of them, like 99.9% .9 of them, do not teach you professional level skills because that's really hard to do. And it's not a particularly easy thing to sell because people get frustrated. They want the easy sugary hit, right? But the reality is to actually get a job. You can't stop at learning the fundamentals. You need to upgrade to that harder bit around professional skills. And that's hard to teach and hard to do in the right way when people are busy. Okay. Now, the people who do help you upgrade to professional level skills are colleges and some of the advanced boot camps, which are very rare. I want to note here very clearly for those of you who can see this on the screen, certifications are an anti signal. Okay. I've linked here to some really interesting data led research on why you shouldn't list certifications on things like LinkedIn because it's an anti signal for people without a background. If you have a background, if you already are in the industry, certifications are fine. But if you're new to the industry and you think certifications are going to help you get a job, do not think so. The data is quite clear. It actually has a negative impact on your chances. Okay. According to this article, take a look at it. So, you want to upgrade to professional level skills? Fine. There, there's an entire industry around that. Colleges and advanced bootcamp, right? So, so far I've covered four out of the seven and I've showed you how each of them has its own separate industry just focused on that one step, right? Some of them like colleges focus on two or three steps, but not more. Step number five, getting interviews and opportunity generation, right? Career coaches do that and some specialist networking training programs do that, okay? Entire industry around networking and, and, and career coaching, okay? Then six, interview preparation. Well, there are two types, right? You have the technical and then you have the behavioral interviews, right? So technical interviews, you have tons of interview prep courses, just tons of them, interviewing cake, algo expert, interviewing.io, like there are so many of them just on technical interviews. And there are a few, not many on behavioral because that's much harder to teach, behavioral and non-technical interviews. There are a few of them, but they're typically career coaches and maybe one or two courses here and there, right? Just on the interview prep stuff. And then finally, for offer selection and negotiation, it's typically coaches who teach you how to negotiate and communicate. That's usually where that's done. Or career coaches who have the expertise will teach you that. But notice that each of these seven steps that I talk about in career change have their own industry. There is no one umbrella thing that teaches you all seven of the steps and stages, right? That's what I try to do. And that's what I do do with my coaching students. But it takes a lot of time. When I say a lot of time, it's not possible to do this in two months or three months, which, as you know, I think is total BS. Career change takes six to 12 months at least. And that's just the kind of time it's going to commit. You're going to have to commit unless you're doing it full time. But I don't encourage you to do it full time because it's a bad idea to lose your current income. Put yourself at financial risk, which is just going to cause anxiety and fear. And that's only going to make things worse for you because you cannot learn when you're afraid. You cannot learn when you're anxious. You cannot learn when you've got financial stress and woes. OK, so that's why I tell people, hold on to your job. It's going to take a bit more time and that's OK. But at least you're not losing money. You still get your income. Let your income fund your career change. OK, if you, for example, quit your job, you lose your annual income. OK, because it's going to take you at least 12 months to get back into the job market. If you're doing a boot camp or college or whatever it is, you're going to be out of action for six to 12 months minimum. Right. So you've got lost the entire year's salary, you've got living expenses, rent, food, bills, all of that stuff to do. If you've got family, you've got all of that. 
and you've got to pay the program fee for your bootcamp or college or whatever it is, right? Makes no sense. Hold on to all that, keep that income coming in, take an extra six months to 12 months if it takes that long and work with me or someone like me, they're not many unfortunately, but work with someone who can hold your hand every step of the way through all the seven stages and get you there. But whether you work with me or not, doesn't matter. My life is set, it's entirely up to you, that's fine. What, what's really important is that you understand these seven stages, okay? It's not about learning the fundamentals. Please, 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 please not think learning some coding language is gonna get you jobs. It is not, never has, never will, okay? What's really important is that you do all of the seven stages, build a plan for each of them correctly and follow the sequence properly and intelligently and systematically. And you have to have confidence in your plan. If you don't have confidence in your plan, you're not gonna to stick to it. Just obvious common sense, right? So you need to have a good plan for each of the seven stages and then just relentlessly execute on it and give it the time it takes, okay? Hope that helps, guys. All the documents that I've talked about here are gonna be linked to in the show notes and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Do it. Just subscribe. You know you gotta do it.